I have no idea where the park is. There's people over there, so I'm gonna assume it's that direction. Yeah, Okay. Right here is the toll booth. Basically, they take a picture of your license plate, and then you have to go up to this payment machine, and I think it's 80 Danish kronas, and I guess you just pay it right before you leave. Guys, we're about to enter the world's oldest operating music park. Whoa, history, come on, one step, one step. I just That's ate. one giant leap for mankind. There he is. <laughs> He's so happy to see us. So because Bakken is free to enter, you pay per ride. So here is the list of all the attractions and then tells you the high requirements and then how much it is. So the two most expensive attractions are uh, Rushiban and, and Tornado, which are the two biggest roller coasters. And that is 50 krona. And here's the ticket booth. Basically, if you want to do the five roller coasters here, it'd be about like 30 something dollars. I think that's what Yannick's gonna do. Uh, Sarah and I are gonna do the two big roller coasters, the Intamin Mine Train and then the Ghost Train. Alright, so you don't get your individual ride tickets there, you get them at the entrance for the ride. So, Yannick and I are stupid, Sarah's smart, she told us to do that and we didn't listen. So, we're gonna go on into the park. Alright, before we do anything, we're stopping to get food because we're hungry. How's the fry? Yeah, that's a good french fry. Yeah, and only fries. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm not sure to subscribe to that. Mm. Only fries. <laughs> Shut up. Found tornado. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. It's like the roller coaster is like bursting out of the room. Look, it's Rushaban and and we're in line for tornado. It's gonna be our first attraction of the day. Alright, so here's the pay station. It's at each of the rides, so we're about to the station of tornado. I guess we just scan our credit cards and enter. Alright, never mind. Turns out it is cash only. So there's our tip for Bakken is you have to have cash. Oh. Are they gonna have change for a 500? All right, take two, let's see if this gives change. Yo, this thing has a moving loading station. That's pretty cool. All right, they gave us change. We broke the 500. That's right, Tornado, it's gonna be insane. Yeah, I've heard that if we ask them for boost mode, really? then they'll like, yeah, that's like a legit thing. Okay. Like, we have to be like, hey, can you give us boost mode? We're enthusiasts, and they'll be like, yeah. Absolutely floored at that experience. Yeah, that, like, that was a uh, one of a kind. Oh sure. my! I see God. why Intamin didn't make more of them. That was. I think they are far too much for. That was too crazy. Even as an enthusiast who like wants to have their face ripped off half the time, that was too much. <laughs> You're the local here. Tell us about this ride, like. I think it came here some four years ago, and first time I tried it was like two weeks ago. I never screamed that much in my life. It's the most <laughs> intense cross I ever tried. And I promise you, you do not want to eat before you try this thing. <laughs> we, we just did! did. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah! So Sarah and I did the front row, Yannick did the back row with Luke, and... What is this country's obsession with entering and exiting through people's, you know, genitalia? We just saw the dog fart coaster, now we went through a naked woman's legs. It was weird. It was, yeah. But it was a fun ride. It was really dark in there for a while, and I'm like, yeah, all right. The restraints really oh, ruined it for uh, me. I got stable. Uh, yeah, you couldn't get any airtime on like any of the hills. And I think that's why I was not very impressed. You not just take that out of my hand. Like, I will cut you. Stop eating the popcorn. Uh, the layout is fine, and it's cool because it's old and stuff. I totally acknowledge that it's like you know amazing for the fact that it's like 90 years old. But when you have the other Rushibanen that is down the street at Tivoli Gardens, and that one is incredible. I'm sorry, but this one does not hold a candle. Hey Kennywood, do you think you're so cool because you got a ride called the Kangaroo? Well, this is also the Kangaroo, except you're literally sitting in a Kangaroo. And our final coaster that we'll be doing here is this mine train right here. So 
So you can use the change machines at each of the rides, and that's what they look like. And you just stick that into the slot to gain entry into the station. Do you know what MT stands for? No, what? My ticket. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I knew nothing about that ride going in, but that was really fun. Oh, okay. That was like really like whippy and forceful. That was really fun, yeah. I liked that a lot. And it came really close to some trees. I thought I was, I was like, my head in the grass. I did too. Like I was like ducking because I thought I was gonna get like hit by something. But we didn't. We didn't, it's but all good. felt like we were gonna. I did not know this, but Bakken has a nebulas right behind Rushabanin. That's awesome. That's got a cool little theme. It's like all gears and stuff. This park is cool, especially like when you consider its history, but it feels touristy, like something that you would find at like an upscale carnival or something that you'd almost see as kind of like in the style of like Pigeon Forge where there's a lot of just touristy drawn attractions and things to do, which is something that I don't think I was initially expecting. Not saying that's a bad thing, but the vibe in my opinion is definitely a lot nicer at Tivoli and uh, some of those other northern parks. One more ride, trying out Tornado again in the non-boost mode, just to compare and contrast uh, what the ride experience is going to be like. Alright, so Luca recommended this ice cream place, and so what we decided to give it a try. Hmm? What'd you get? Okay, so I got the Dolce de Leche. Which is like a really nice caramel ice cream. Yeah. Ooh. I the I think this banana split. Banana split. Yeah. With okay. The whipped cream and I think it's raspberry jam. And we also got the banana split and then so black and white, split. which was a recommendation, and it does look very good as well. Mm -hmm. On our way out of Bakken, and we're literally in a forest. Like you wouldn't even know that there was a music park here. That's crazy. We conquered. The world's oldest amusement park. What do you think, Yannick? It was uh, an interesting place. It was sort of like fair, kind of. Um, yeah. They have like different, uh, yeah, people running all the rides. It's like a carnival in the woods. Yeah. It was definitely more modern than I was expecting. I expected yeah. it to be more like Tivoli, but it, it did. It had like like a mix between a fair and a boardwalk feel in certain parts. But yeah. I will say, my the best thing about this place is that they did not have that thing walking around as a walk around character. <laughs> yeah. If I had seen that, I would have gone running. Just saying. Yeah, it was, it was freaky. Yeah, I mean, this was definitely not a <laughs> yeah. themed experience like you would get at Jur's Summerland, yeah. you know? Like, this was the most amusement park of our visit. Theme park. Yeah, very, yeah, the theming was pretty much, like, non-existent, which, you know, it was set up. Bon Bon Land had more Bon Bon Land definitely oh, did, absolutely. yeah. That's bon, not necessarily a good thing. Bon Bon <laughs> Land was, like, the weirdest park ever. This was, like... Uh, yeah, it was like a carnival in the woods. It was a nice carnival, I would say. Upscale. Upscale carnival. So, it looks like it's a, a place that people like to go and just hang out to. Like, yeah. like a lot of places to just eat. Yeah, you can tell that this is like a, a popular like, like hangout spot because you can just walk in. There were some nice restaurants in there. So people are just like in there like just enjoying a meal. So, no, I, I understand why, why people would come there. So, all right, we're going to head on over into Copenhagen and uh, drop our stuff off and then enjoy some traditional Danish food. All right, guys, James Corden back with another episode of Carpool Karaoke. We've got three of the members from Queen. You ready? <laughs> Here we go. I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy. Put a gun against his head. <laughs> Pull my trigger now. <laughs> So this is where we're staying. It's in a tent. It's like a hostel, and so here's the beds. So. <laughs> Definitely a uh, unconventional last night here in Denmark, but that's okay. It's uh. Definitely memorable. We're walking through Copenhagen and I've seen a lot of shawarma places here. We're looking for dinner and it's like, do you want to eat shawarma here? Or do you want to eat shawarma there? Do you want boys shawarma? I, I like girls shawarma. shawarma. <laughs> what is this KFC knockoff? AFC? What? Wow, that looks really good actually. Oh yeah, this Danish cuisine just looks incredible. To be fair, I looked all over for a place to get like Scandinavian food. Only way you can get it 
is like by paying so much money and we're like I can't afford that so we're just gonna have here pasta. we go and on his third cheese pizza of the trip it's really good are you it's proud of one. yourself I'm very proud of myself are you gonna eat the whole thing again oh it's small yeah absolutely Ten o'clock at night, and that's the sunset, and it is absolutely beautiful. All right, as we're chilling here in our hostel, it's the last night of Copenhagen. Tomorrow we fly to Germany and begin the next leg of our trip. Which is gonna be awesome. Uh, we're actually breaking up Germany into two parts. We're doing movie park and Fantasialand first, and then doing Poland, and then coming back to Germany to do the southern part. Nice. Um, also, you should show it in here. It's like yeah, yeah. This is really cool. Like, I really like this atmosphere. Yannick, how would you say this trip has gone so far? I mean, this is this was it. Yeah. It was amazing. Everything worked out really well, um, except for the towels at the Airbnb. <laughs> but apart from that, um, no, we really we loved all the coasters, the parks, and the people here. So nice. We got some good food most of the time. It's, it's, it was it was a great time. Sarah, do you agree with everything you just said? I was listening. I was editing something. <laughs> so, but probably yes. I thought the trip has gone fantastic. No, it's, um, been, it's been amazing. Yeah, uh, Denmark is great. Um, yeah, the so parks have been super fun. Everyone is very nice. Uh, Copenhagen's a great city. Um, There's no catch to it either. It's yeah. nice for the sake of being nice. Yeah, and underrated rides, you know? Um, like, I wouldn't say any of the ones that we did were, like, super crazy high on, like, my top bucket list of all time or anything, but I really enjoyed everything we did. There were so. surprises in there. Like, I oh, you, absolutely. Like, Richard Vaughn and Anna, totally was surprising. That was surprising. Tornado at Bakken. Was, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Paraten and Phonix were fantastic, you know. So, a uh, lot of good stuff. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this portion of the trip uh, with Denmark. And we will see you in our next vlog, which will be from Movie Park Germany. So, hope you guys enjoy this. Make sure to stay tuned for that here at Coast Juice. We'll see you next time.